uh, just last week, was it? Last Saturday, I uh, Sheffield O2 Academy supporting the Clone Roses. Sweet, and sweet. How many, how many was it that? I reckon it was about 1,500. Wow, that's a good, that's a big gig, mate. Excellent. It's, excellent. Aye, it's certainly big for me, you know. So, um, so Jay, uh, Paul was in, uh, what was your band's name again there? It's the James Experience, Born of Frustration. Fantastic. Um, James cover band, man. They're really, really, really good. Um, so how did that come about, Paul? And how uh, how was that going just now? Well, actually, <laughs> I, was, uh, I was poached um, from... Uh, <laughs> That's always nice. <laughs> aye. It was round the campfire at Dalovich Festival. And the band, the, the James Experience, were playing at it. And I'd what was up. that festival? It's it's Loch Stock. It's my friend Paddy that runs it. All oh, right, right. In Dalovich, um, it's an excellent. We kind of quiet, low key festival. Right, cool man. Apart from when we're there, obviously. <laughs> so I'd I'd went up to my pal Soapy, and I was like, "Oh, Soapy, you like James?" I was like, oh, "Wait, I've got a couple of tunes." So I'm sitting with a guitar, badly playing it as as I'm <laughs> really really bad at guitar. But I gave him, I think I gave him two James tunes. But I didn't know that it was the guy that kind of ran the James tribute was sitting there. Oh, you didn't know he was in the... It didn't was know, so... Um, I think, uh, you know, that way Soapy's like, oh, we'll get you up on the stage and need to sing a couple of songs with the guys. Um, and naturally the singer was like, what is he fuck? I'll be right here. Who's that? Get him to fuck. Um, so I wasn't bothered. But apparently this was getting planned that I would be the next singer because the singer at the time they were having some differences and you know, the, the, the guy he couldn't make a lot of the gigs aye so logistics aye that becomes a, a big problem totally um, so basically it was like right would you be interested and I thought you know I wasn't doing anything at the time I was maybe you know like doing stuff with Curdo and Drew mm. and all that kind of thing um, but just always in the house mm. never taking it any further yep and um it was a chance of some big gigs, and I'm like, absolutely, you know, at my age now, I'm like, I ought to a gig. What age are you now? I'm 53. You don't look at me, I'll tell you that, you don't Cheers, look at me, I'll take man. that, thank you. Well, let's go back a bit then, mate, right, so, what? how did you first get into music? What was your, what was your first uh, musical F- memories? First memories were, I was right into, I don't know if you remember a band, The Sweet. I don't think I have. They were like a 70s glam rock. (laughs) But I'm talking, I was four. I was four at the time. And I I used to mime with a carpet sweeper. (laughs) (laughs) You know, like standing there with the the, the, the cool face and all that. So it was always something that I was really interested in. I'm talking four. Um, So, but I think as I got older, you know, I always liked music. I'd always, you know, like taping the charts and all that kind of thing. Now, I think when I hit 15, I get into David Bowie and pretty much my life changed and the whole perception of music, theatre, you know, heroes, that kind of thing. It just totally changed. Yeah. Um, I think Bowie had that influence on a, on a lot of people, didn't he? Definitely, mate, definitely. De- but it's, as a, a, that was a, a moment that I think changed my life and changed. Then it, th- it was just after that that I started with my first band. And they were called the Diamond Dogs. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't even think, of, you know, I couldn't even think of an original name. So I'm like, oh, I'm just going to poach a Bowie album, <laughs> and nobody will notice. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember we'd done a big uh, backdrop. That's what you had back in the day, you know. It was like a backdrop, and it was some guys from like the the, the art. Uh, so like the art bit in St. Pat's. The, the art department. The art department. <laughs> so they'd done all this big, and it was like a big kind of wolf thing jumping through the air with the moon at the back and big claws, and it was like diamond dogs, and it was wrote in a different style. It wasn't wrote in the Bowie style. Um, right. And I thought, that will look good. Nobody will know, but obviously people did know, you know. It was Aye. just one of these things. But that was great fun. So that was your first bad. So mm-hmm. what, was it, what was that? Three piece, four piece, five, five piece. It was for the first band, the five piece is that's cool. Aye, right? um, it was Mark Talbot on bass, James Curry, Jama on guitar, Anne Stevenson on keyboards, and Sandy Graham on the drums. <laughs> um, but there might be something happening. 
There might be something happening with Big Tally shortly. Excellent, so. good news, mate. That's great uh, news. Just man. totally for a bit of fun. And um, it's, any gig to me is a great gig, you know? So, any excuse. No, totally, man. Uh, that's that's it. When you get the buzz for performing, there, be, there comes a point when you're, you'll you be just if you want to do it in any capacity you can. So, I totally understand that, man. Um, so, where did it go for there then? What was your What was the next part of the musical story? Well, I joined the Diamond Dogs and we were playing in the Pine Trees when I was 16. Um, And we started off in the Pine Trees and I think we moved to the Denny Club. We'd done a big gig in there and then we started playing in the Toon Circuit Mm -hmm. and we were playing in the Cutty Sark. But I remember I was playing in the Cutty Sark at 16. Mm -hmm. But remember, (laughs) you you get served in the Cutty at Ah, 16. That was just one of the (laughs) things, you know. Um... And it, I just was like, this is just great fun. And then we, ca- we kind of, I think they, they split up. You know, everybody kind of go in their ways. And folk, like a first band, a lot of folk will be in a band once. And that would be, I was in a band back That's when like I was 16 that. and I never, you know, never went back to it. It was something I always kind of kept going back to. And then Aye. I met up with Tommy and Jerry. And they'd kind of fancy coming along and singing with us and David Curry as well on keyboards and we friendy on the bass. All right. Um and that just took it up a level from you know the Diamond Dogs and we were playing bigger gigs. We say bigger gigs, it was still pubs. Yeah, yeah. But busy, busy nights. You know, yeah, yeah. I, we always kinda we always filled places and everybody seemed to have a good time. And that's that's the whole thing, isn't it? It's if you're going out, you're doing your thing and everybody's having a great night. Uh, it's almost the mark of the mark of success. Eventually, is whether you can you can pull that off mm-hmm. night after night, like whether you can make people have that same uh, feeling. Mate, there you go. Um, I I was just it's just funny. I was thinking there. So like the, the an earlier episode we done in the podcast, we had Jerry on, and we were talking about about Sid James' experience. Now Paul was up, Paul was the singer in this band. That's what you were the band we were just describing there. Eh? Yeah, yeah. Um, just in case there was an earlier iteration, but. Uh, and so he was talking away about some of it as well, and I, I was telling him like one of the things I can, the earliest memories I've got is my mom and my mum and Corinne, who's mm. Paul's sister, like talking about how great it was at your gigs, like. And I, I was before the time I was even like, I, I was, I didn't really get why it was even a big deal. Do you know what I mean? I was that f- like far away for even playing a, an instrument yet or anything like that. Do you know what I mean? And uh, and how it was like how you actually became a big thing. Like as I started to get into gigs, I remember being like, I want that reaction. Mm-hmm. I want the reaction that you used to get off my mom that before I was old enough to understand mm-hmm. understand any of it. Do you know what I mean? And uh, it, was, it was pretty funny. But I know another thing I was just thinking about there as well. But it's, I actually think I can remember your li- that when I was about sixteen. The pine trees was just about to sh- close. Mm-hmm. The pine trees, uh, most people out local to the Dumbarton area will, will be able to remember the, the pine trees pub uh, on the back road. But it, it was, I can, I'm sure I, my, my kind of earliest memory is trying to get in and getting knocked back. And it was your, it was it was the Sid James experience that was playing that night. Right. And it's, what, it's almost the only memory I have of the pine trees itself because mm-hmm. I was too young. Do you know what I mean? Aye. Um, but I'm, I'm sure that night that I can mind, uh, that was actually the, that was, I, I don't know if it was the last gig he's done in there. I can't remember, to be honest. I know I played in there as a Diamond Dogs. I don't know how many times we played Sid James. Um, but there was different kind of members came and went as well. Aye. But again, <clears throat> you know, all, fr- you, you know, you were saying my sister and uh, your mum, Ellen, um, friends and family came and they played the part of being the audience. Aye. You know. Aye. Which was really, really important. I think doing it on that level, because I mean, we did. We have played some frosty ones as well. <laughs> <laughs> I bet we. But I-